You cannot go past a good cut of venison and this is brilliant. We have been so lucky with our venison supply. Unbelievable. Now once upon a time, back in the days before refrigeration, you'd have to eat this in one sitting or it would go off. There were really only two ways of preserving meat back in the old days. One was to salt and brine it and keep it in big containers which were unwieldy and mostly left at home. And the other was to dry it. Now you've heard of jerky, beef jerky, all sorts of different meats with jerky. In South Africa, they call it biltong. And today, out of the Field to Fork cookbook, we're doing the venison biltong strips. So the first ingredient I'm gonna get on with is the dried minced onion. I've put that straight into a pestle and mortar because it really does need to be brought down in size a little bit. Now on top of that, I've got some rosemary here, which again, because it's fibrous and although it's dried, it does need to be blended in a little. So there's the rosemary going in. That's dried rosemary. And I'm just gonna pummel that a little. And the only one of other of these ingredients that we're gonna put into it is the dried parsley. Because again, we need to really sort of blend that in. Make sure you get it all in because it's only a teaspoonful, but it does add a little bit to it. And you might ask yourself, why aren't we using fresh ingredients, fresh herbs in here? But the whole point of a marinade is that you want a depth of flavour and sometimes the dried variety of herb has a far greater depth of flavour. It's not a fresh, bright flavour, but it's a depth of flavour and you need that to seep into the meat, to give the meat more than it's offering you, however good it is, and this is good, its own flavours. Now, I'm going to start assembling the marinade and ideally I'm using a stainless steel bowl. A good ceramic, a glass, or a stainless steel bowl for the absolutely the best results. So we're going to put all the dry ingredients in here, the really dry ingredients. So there's the salt, here comes the paprika, now the sugar, the garlic powder, and the black pepper. Okay, so we're blending these dry ingredients that we just put in to make sure that they're just together. So we'll just get this, the last bits from the pestle and mortar in, and then we'll blend those dry and semi-dry ingredients together. And then we're going to add the liquids. And we've got water, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce and liquid smoke. So here's the liquid smoke and we need two teaspoons of this. And I might add that liquid smoke is not the easiest ingredient to find. We found it at a local brewing supply shop where you get your home brew details and all of that sort of stuff. The next liquid ingredient is soy sauce and we need two teaspoons of soy. And our final two ingredients are Worcestershire sauce and plain water. So let's have a healthy splurge of Worcestershire sauce. It's terrific. A lot of people don't know it's got anchovies in it. This is two cups of water. Remember, you've got a fair bit of meat that you've got to coat with this marinade. That's lovely. Okay, mm, starting to smell really good. You've got to watch that garlic, it can overpower everything, but the Worcestershire sauce with this little anchovy kick in the back is terrific. So that's set and ready for the meat. Here goes the meat. Make sure it goes all the way in. So this looks as though it's a pretty quick process. Well, this is really the prep and this is the marinade. This now goes in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Now this venison has been marinating in the fridge for 24 hours. Big trick, when you remember, as you go to the fridge, turn the venison. It must be turned during the process. Let's take a look and see how the marinades work. Well, that to me looks fantastic. It's really soaked it in. For the next step, we need the marinated meat, kitchen roll, toothpicks, and this contraption here, which is a tray from the oven. And this is where we're going to, with the help of toothpicks, suspend each of our strips of venison. So the first thing is, let's get the meat dry. So just take it out and put it on a bed of kitchen paper. Make sure you get double wrapping on the bottom here because you just want it to help soak up the juices that you've been very careful to smear on the meat. Now you want to get it off as quickly as you can. Okay, so what you're doing here is patting the meat dry. You clearly don't want to remove too much, but you do need to get the meat dry to start the process. To take your toothpick and your first piece of meat, Pierce the meat, it's dead simple, 
It's like putting an earring on. Drop it in to the baking tray. This is now a repetitive process. Just keep moving this along until you've filled the rack or used up all the meat. Now these are clustered in the center so they can get caught by the drip tray in the oven. So now it's a matter of putting this in the oven. For me, I'm putting it on the highest rack. The oven is on the lowest setting. I've put a drip tray in the bottom already. This process is gonna take about six to 12 hours. Time for a, you know, to get the mates around for a game of cards. So this is the end result. Venison biltong strips, or as most of us know it, venison jerky.